This podcast was recorded on Zencaster. Thank you for tuning in to the Live Like an Acrobat podcast. I'm your host, Shanae Stiletto, two-time acrobatic gymnastics world champion, USA Gymnastics Hall of Fame member, and world-class circus hand balancer. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and comment in support of the podcast, which is available on all platforms. Enjoy the show. Hello, darling. Hello, Mr. Ben Mendoza. Welcome back to Live Like an Acrobat. I'm so excited that you are back. For those um, that listened to our previous episode, uh, I did Pride in Circus with the lovely Ben Mendoza, and now he is gracing us again with his presence. As I said, that he will be a reoccurring guest on the podcast because he is an invaluable presence within this circus business industry and community. He uh, knows all sorts of things and can speak to it in so many different dimensions and has a beautiful, beautiful spirit. And his entire goal is mentorship within this business, which I love and the advocacy that goes hand in hand with that of um, making a better environment and keeping this business accountable and keeping ourselves accountable, which is so important. Ben is back today because he, like uh, so many of us, understands and can feel the importance of asking for what you are worth as things continue to open up, as the pandemic uh, lessens, we are performing more. And Ben wants uh, to remind us how important it is to ask for the appropriate rate and to not to succumb to what we know is very easy in this business, which is to not ask for what you're worth and for people to kind of hijack that conversation and use a lot of different arguments, including the pandemic, to not pay you what you are worth in terms of gigging, touring, eventing, however that may show up virtually, in person, live. Doesn't matter. As everyone knows who listens to this podcast, I spoke very, very clearly and on my soapbox from the beginning at uh, the beginning of the pandemic saying in the virtual setting, do not go down in your price. Do not allow people to sequester their budgets off, to not give you what you are worth during the pandemic, even within the virtual sphere, which I saw was a challenge at some points for a lot of us. So Mr. Ben, that is your intro and thank you so much for coming on. Hi, hi, hi. Thank you so much for having me once again. It is always a pleasure. (laughs) <laughs> the pleasure is all mine. So I am just very happy to have you back again. And um, yeah, and to let's dig into uh, the dynamics of our conversation today. How can we at this time, Ben, continue to ask for what we are worth? And what do you see? What do you what do you feel right now is happening as everyone starts to come back? We were speaking a little bit before we started recording. I was talking about how it kind of feels like a stake to the heart coming back into the live performance. It's definitely <laughs> um, kind of a uh, my, my way of doing it was uh, jumping in a cold lake. It's a little <laughs> bit shocking coming into things because so many of the kind of negative practices got brought up to the forefront that we realized we weren't dealing with anymore and I just want people to be careful to not jump back into things because this is our chance to make things right for ourselves uh everybody that has survived the pandemic has figured out how to pay their bills and and manage without gigging and that's not where everybody's money came from for so long admittedly yes uh, a lot of us had unemployment help and and different other we've figured out how to do it and it, it wasn't necessarily just that everybody found new jobs but i think this is the best time ever to try and educate clients about uh our worth uh one thing being i, I that i've experienced recently is the clients trying to do the the COVID discount and that's not a thing people need to understand that's not a thing in no. jobs that I was doing during COVID there I was getting double and they were few and far between but the difference being was uh before we were before the vaccine we had to have our safety absolutely taken care of and we had to make sure that we were we were quarantined and that our uh our workspace and where we were performing was um uh, 
like di socially distanced and that our travel was going to be safe and all these other uh, precautions needed to be come in and those cost money. And one of those things that we realized was that if you want performance, you need to be able to pay for it. That's just that's just what you needed to do. And along with those things, we already take our 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 bodies and our lives into our hands. So even more so, having to take all these other precautions and think of all these other things um, made it so that we were we were we I demanded to get paid what I was worth. And if people didn't understand that, it was something that I had to walk away with. I would try to educate them as politely as possible. And most of them, when I set it out the way that I just explained it to them. Also, the cost of finding a rehearsal facility that you can rent out all on your own. That is another more money or people that had to, that bought aerial rigs. That's even more of an investment. All these different things cost money that on the back end that you need to be able to show, like uh, be able to make up for when you're performing in this kind of situation. Now that things have kind of opened up again though, um, one of the positive things that I found was a lot of um, kind of predatory production and event producers that would try and do a lot of underbidding because they just weren't very good people and they weren't very good producers have gone out of business or changed their businesses or gone into real estate, done something completely nothing to do with this. And then Thank I've also God. found a lot of... <laughs> Yeah, it, that has been like, if out of this horrible, horrible time that we've gone through, yeah. I've seen so many people close up shops, mm -hmm. I, I've close up shop. I've seen um, schools that were, I use the term loosely as schools. They were mm -hmm. spaces that you could dangle from, but that were not run by nice people mm -hmm. um, shut down, which it made it. Um, it was, it was, it was made it awkward for people that were just so used to having their training space. But what it did do is clear out space for new people to come along and do things correctly. And I think that's our opportunity that we have right now is to be able to come in and actually be like, hi, no, $250 is not enough <laughs> to do a movie or <laughs> to do a giant corporate event. And that's one of the other things also that I understand that. And right a music video with well, Rihanna. Well, oh my gosh. And <laughs> that was the thing that I I was speaking to you before is I've been lucky enough to still be able to perform right now. And I always laugh whenever somebody gives me a modeling job. I'm like, are you crazy? But thank you. Yes. Okay, great. <laughs> uh, but we as performers uh, need to always be prepared for the next evolution of what your career is going to be based on what how your body is going to change uh for guys some of us are going to lose some flexibility and gain more muscle so you're going to be able to change your acts according to that and then there's going to come a point where everything gets real crunchy and if you didn't make plans uh then you're gonna you're gonna get a rude awakening but there's also so many things that are still part of the industry that are that are that are really great and really special and if you've hung in as long as uh people like <laughs> you and i and any of the crew that have been in there for decades um i really really enjoy the business aspect i enjoy the mentorship aspect i really love casting i really love giving people um like business advice and and helping them kind of find their ways and figure out what they're going to do for their next step because people have also had to innovate so much during this time Oh my and God, so like crazy. that's yeah, and that's yeah. one of the things though that I'm 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 really excited about and that I'm I'm doing right now. So what I wanted to get into with you was speak a little bit about what my experience was uh, performing in New York and performing during the pandemic, and um, just have that out so people can have um, some form of just some of that info out and things are going to be different for different cities things are going to be things are going to be more expensive in new york because everything's more expensive in new york but i want people to kind of gauge how i uh how i price out different jobs and how i've navigated um just my performing career and they can apply that to whatever their situation is um one of the examples being that for for giant corporate gigs I would get anywhere from twelve hundred to two thousand dollars, depending on what I was doing, whether it was a solo or a double or 
I was doing one or two X or, um, and how complicated um, production was, if they wanted custom costumes, if they wanted me to come in and do, uh, there was one company that wanted me to do a performance over a pool and I had to create a mini, oh, I charged them $8,000 for that because I was like, yes, you're setting this up, but I have to be in here rehearsing on a completely new way to deal with my apparatus since it's going to be soaking wet. So <laughs> that was going to be, uh, they were paying for my R&D time as well as all, all of that. Um, I couldn't ask for one of my club gigs to pay that because that's not just not realistic. Like they won't be able to handle that. But also I wouldn't do a job for, for 250 bucks for a place that I knew was doing like $20,000 just in like at the door or, or I knew that they were making tons of money at the bar. That, that isn't fair. But also if there's a cute little club gig and it's not terribly complicated and it's for a friend and you're enjoying doing it, like 500 bucks is something that is, is reasonable. But also I, I wouldn't go in there if somebody was already performing and undercut them or do anything like that. I would have conversations with the people that are performing there and see what the, what the norm is. Um, because it's been anywhere from it, it fluctuates because sometimes people have sponsorships sometimes like Red Bull will take care of paying for you and people don't know how to ask for these things and see what the different possibilities are and I know that there's people that have incredible shows that I know are on these tiny shoe, shoestring budgets maybe they don't need Ariel and I've told people that I'm like I'm so sorry I'm like if you if you can't afford this they don't understand all the other things that come into like the training and the, the danger aspect that you have to take care of. Many um, times you have to educate and tell people about those things. And yeah. also don't let people get out of manipulating you out of those things that are important because I've been in a lot of situations like that where even within the explaining people then try and act incredibly naive afterwards or people will try and act like oh it's things that they just don't really understand and it's like you know something if you want to act like you don't understand good for you but I'm going to break it down so that you do understand every single facet of what I'm doing I find sometimes that's very helpful and sometimes it makes people a little bit confrontational from what I've I have seen fully, oh my as gosh, well. I have fully experienced you know, that. And, exactly. and I, I've been shocked by that sometimes where I'm like, wow, that's I, fascinating because you're just literally describing the different components it takes to do the job. And you're also too mm -hmm. showing them why that money means what it means, like why you need that amount of money. And uh, that creates this entire new conversation that is not always very pleasant. One of the challenges also that this is a a uh, topic for something completely different, but it's still in the vein of that is I have really made it a point to try and educate people because I have I have big friendly non-threatening panda privilege when it comes to speaking to people. I try and be diplomatic. I also try and make it funny and like keep laughing through things and smiling through things, even though for sure I am giving them information that I am not budgeting on. I've watched <laughs> some of my friends um, have have challenges with people that that try and turn it into a confrontational thing because they think they're going to intimidate you into that. And also mm -hmm. I have a, ooh, I, mm -hmm. I'm not going to break into this one, but I have a huge problem with seeing how certain um, producers or p potential clients have spoken to my female friends. Mm -hmm. And that's a whole nother topic. And, but that goes hand in hand, you know, because when you're speaking out prices, then I actually think that's very important to say, because when I speak about a price versus when you come into the room and speak about a price, we know that it's gauged completely different. And so I think yep. the nuances are very, very, very important. I think that we actually, when we go general and we don't speak about the nuances, that's when it gets hurtful yeah. because people go in, they go loaded, right? And they think, well, I'm going to go in with all of these things and it's going to work 
work out for me in a, in the very same way. However, we know that that's not true. We know that you can yeah. go in and ask for a price. I can go in and ask for a price and we can have com two completely different experiences where depending on the client, they might be very, very, very favorable to you. And most oftentimes mm -hmm. than not, they're more favorable to the guys. It doesn't matter. We're still in that vein. I don't care what anybody says. And then other yeah. times they can be incredibly, incredibly sympathetic to me because of yeah. the weight that I will hold in that situation, being a woman based upon what that person, um, the undertones of that conversation based upon how they present in the world. So, uh, you know, based upon what you look like, um, that comes down to pricing. I Absolutely. Mean, go in. And I also think that uh, it's a very, uh, I try to be cautious about certain things because I also know sometimes the advice that I give someone that could also railroad them into not getting the job because they're asking for something that that person based upon how they see ex and experience that person will not be willing to give them. Yes, that person deserves that rate, but are they going to give it to you based upon sometimes how you look? No, they won't. They'll say no to you, deny you, and then go and give it to that other person. And then you'll wonder, that's weird. Why, why didn't that happen? Yeah. So I think, again, when we speak about business, Business, which we know, like, obviously, the general statements that we all know, and that we want to make too. I think that it's really precious that you're bringing that up. Because to me, that is the deeper conversation around all of that yeah. of like, when people decide what you're worth, even though yeah. you're like, wait a second, I know that you paid so and so that amount of money to do that. Or I know that that's the median rate going around. Why am I having so many difficulties getting that? And so we have to, I think, you know, be responsible for that because I have seen irresponsibility around that in this business too, which people throwing out prices and, oh, I get this and, oh, I've gotten that and don't do it for less. And it's like, well, wait a second here. There are so many factors, like what you said, being in yeah. New York, being in which city you're from, um, you know, depending on how you present yourself, your resume, your CV, how you speak, all of those things matter. Exactly. Um, determining yeah. of what, you know, what you're going to end up getting. And I think that it's not very fair when it's just like, oh, well, don't take anything less than that. It's like, well, what about if that person really, really, really needs, you know, the job? I'm, I'm all for it too. I don't want anybody working for less. Um, I, you know, I'm always there telling people to work for, you know, everything that you think that you're worth as well. But you, I think we also too, we know this, that there are some people and some performers and in some cases where they will not pay you what you're worth and you 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 take the job. You have to take that job. You need to take that so job. If I you can walk found... away from it, good. You know, and if not, then I think it's it it's it's good to look at the reasons of in and around why um that experience is maybe happening that way. So that's something that I also um have figured out a way to navigate that I wanted to share with people. Um what we were saying before uh, goes into the vein of know who your client is. Mm -hmm. And there's some people that uh, they're like, there is a very reputable strip club that does aerial performances. And I've, I know a couple of them where they're like, this is how they make it. Like they're trying to make it high art and they pay really well, but they only hire duos. And in my experience, um, like because of the nature of the thing, uh, the girls that have negotiated for their uh, for their duo have done very well. Uh, I have worked in lots of gay establishments where I've hired for a male female duo, and I have had a lot better, <laughs> like uh, just a better experience and response when I've negotiated like that. There's things that I also try and tell people that I. I speak in a lot of slang. I speak in three languages. Um, I have a sense of humor, but I also know if I'm going to a corporate client and they are very buttoned up, I know that I need to send um, professional emails that are uh, that have been spell checked to death and have proper spacing and not a bunch of emojis and no slang because they they people. Uh, people do people judge and that's gonna that's gonna help your experience in terms of the other stuff that you were talking about in terms of being uh getting different dealing with different levels of pay i have it set up so that i do two free things a year because i know that there's sometimes where uh 
I have a friend that has a really beautiful art project that really speaks to me that I know that they couldn't afford me. And I want to help them out with that. And I really believe in what we're making. And it's, it's just, it really, it excites me because luck, there's jobs that feed your soul and jobs that feed your belly. And you try and make them cross over as much as possible. But with, sometimes you just, you want to make art. And so when people are nice enough to they're like, hey, we don't have a giant budget for this, but we really want to make it. I tell them that if they're giving me two, 300 bucks, let's call that my per diem and my travel and my space rental for rehearsal. And let's just say that I did this one for free. I would rather quantify that in that way than be like, oh yeah, I paid $300 for this aerial routine that was like 40 feet in the air. And like, cause that is a way to show people and educate them to be like, this has worth, but I'm doing you a favor. This isn't the way that it always is for everyone. Uh, the other thing jobs that I do are, I always get hit up for the, oh, the benefit, oh, the benefit this, we're benefiting that, we're benefiting this, will you come perform oh. for free and we can, we can write it off on your taxes. And oh, yes. <laughs> you cannot write it off on your taxes, contrary no. <laughs> to popular belief. The only way that you can write it off on your taxes is if they pay you the, what, $1,500, $2,500 or whatever, the $10,000 they say you can write it off on your taxes. Right. And then you donate it back to the to, to them. And there's no way they're ever going to do that because uh, you imagine all the problems that it can make with that. Of I course. do like to help causes though and help things. So I let people know, I, I let people know at the beginning of the year or whenever that I'm like, hey, I do two free shows a year because it takes a lot out of me. And um. I will do one benefit. I will do one one thing. And, and if people come get in and they ask me, if they're the first one that asks me, then I'm absolutely happy to do it. It might be later in the year, it might be in the beginning of the year, but it's I do I do one of each of those a year. And then I don't feel like I'm being like, oh no, you can't have me. Oh no, I'm too good for anything. Um, but I also don't feel like I'm getting taken advantage of and I don't get stuck in the, oh, um, you'll get you'll get um you'll get great exposure my favorite <laughs> favorite favorite line of course people that are like um yeah and you bought your car with exposure right i uh, i favorite... think that it should be illegal actually to have <laughs> anybody perform like that i really do i think that it should be against the law for you to hire performers to do an exchange for flights and exposure and for per diems. Uh, i'm sorry and like you were saying in certain situations where it's people that you know and things like that you do like little trades was, and my, the worst one was there's things there here in there but there was a cryptocurrency company and i'm like <laughs> these are the people that have money and they're gonna fly you to japan and put you up for two weeks and they they're renting <laughs> out the entire hotel and you don't think that you can ask for your rate right what they're you, renting out an entire doing? island but they're gonna bring you and um, and you know i was actually talking there was another company that i know that has been around for a very 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 long time they will remain nameless um but they were offering people a lot of work for a long time where they were flying people all over the world to do these very lush high-end events and paying them a few hundred dollars hundred a few hundred dollars to do these events that are worth yeah thousands upon thousands of dollars but this yeah. comes back to the tv market and you know i just uh i don't know if you know but the uh the uh the production workers and things um have been uh trying to negotiate new contracts here in la uh everybody that works on set i mean finally because these are people that are working on set for less than minimum wage while you're standing there yeah. with a person that's making forty thousand dollars a day um yeah. and you're making like seven seven dollars an hour when it comes down to it after overtime which you usually don't even get um mm. and so it's like this huge divide in things and we need also to to go along with that, I say a circus minimum wage. There needs to be a minimum wage that you cannot pay someone less than that to do this type of work. Like you're saying, you can't pay them on exposure. That doesn't mean anything unless the, um, the, you know, unless you get fifty thousand jobs out of it, which you are not going to. <laughs> which we is all, not going to happen. It's yeah. not going to happen. Um, and yeah. yeah, continue. What well, I mean, um, the best way that I've had people. Um, break it down because sometimes you have to educate the artists themselves is ask them what 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 is the lowest hourly that you would be willing to do this take into account <laughs> what your take into account what your training time is how much your equipment um to to use for this is cost 
what your admin time is. How many hours on the phone or on emailing have you spent going back and forth on this job? And then when you are going to this gig, divide all that time by um, how much you're getting paid. And if you are not getting paid something that you can live with and feel good about, if when you break it down, you're like, oh my gosh, I spent 20 hours on this gig and made like 30 bucks an hour. That's, and it's this giant thing. Like you should, you should revisit that and try and do a little math, which I know is hard for, <laughs> for performers. Um, but it's something that get, get a, get a nerd to do it. That's the other thing as well is, um, there's, there's people, there's people that you can ask for help. I, me being one of them, um, as I'm going into more casting and kind of helping people out. A lot of people are, are venturing into new ways to approach this business. I try and help them with their ideas and um, just give them a little bit of, of point them in the right direction to start finding things. So they're not just trying to swing in the dark like we had to. Um, so right, because there if anybody are tools. has any questions, yes. There um, are people that somebody, know. Yeah, yeah there, there I are mean, somebody there's, and ask them. And yeah, I think exactly. It's there's a lot of people, people that can help. Sorry. There's a lot of people that can help people. And I want to reiterate that in a lot of different positions. And I think sometimes people are very scared in this business to ask for help. And I also want to say sometimes when other people that have maybe been artists get into positions of power, we also know sometimes they have not wielded and used that power very well. And so the fact that people get a little bit scared and a little bit nervous, sometimes people use the people within that you do know that you feel like you should be able to trust the most. You have not been able to and still not, because I don't want to talk about these things as pastimes. We've got a lot of different narratives running around still in this business. Yeah. Even like what you said about like dialing into how much time it takes. People in this business in and around still could care less about how much time they think they're taking from you within your day to organize their events. Yeah. I've had people yeah. not very happy when it's like, I will get back to you at a certain time or within this time frame, And I only have this amount of time to discuss your event because I have other things to do and I'm not putting more into it other than what I know um, is actually necessary to try and get this job done because uh, oh my gosh the amount of times amount. that I've told people your when I've told people your lack of planning does not constitute a crisis on my part there we yes, go I absolutely when I, I, I with clients I say absolutely I can totally do that do you have enough money to do that because we can solve anything if you have enough money to throw at, throw at that like yes I can get somebody totally last minute even though we've known about this for eight months and the three people that I put on hold have all booked jobs now, like that kind of stuff right? infuriates me. But like, I, I, that is another way to educate people and try and, and, and like know your worth. Um, one thing that I wanted to talk about though, is um, what you were saying before about, about how people should ask for help. And sometimes it's a little intimidating is I think also as the the people that are older, not older, more seasoned, need to make it a point to um, to to be open to having those conversations with people. Because I've had I've been lucky enough to have people um, kind of trust me, and I've tried to I try and check in with them and see how they're doing. And I um, I'm happy to help people out with things, but also because I've been on this soapbox for so long. I have had some students that are there, they love it so much and they are ready to perform, but in they're more at showcase level. And also there's different levels of um, like circus. I've kind of broke it, br broken it down into three. One is the fitness fanatics and they're the people that um, they just love the, the mental and the physical challenge of it. And they kind of either got sick of what they're doing at the gym or they just, uh, it's just something interesting and new on their bucket list. But these are people that have full-time jobs and they are doing their training just because they like how it makes them feel and they enjoy the community. Then there are the, um, the part-timers that they have a job, but also they really, really spend a lot of time doing this uh and they are they they are performing and a lot of, there's like a lot of burners that worked in tech that i knew that were kind of like this um they mostly just want a chance to perform but also this isn't their bread and butter this isn't how they're paying their bills so that's been something where i've ha heard over and over again that like oh thank you but we'll just get a burner to, in, to get it 
come in here and do it for 200. Oh yeah. And that chaps my bark after I, me starting so many careers <laughs> at Burning Man for the last 17 years. But I also understand what the need is and how they weren't educated about certain things. The last version of the people that are the professionals, um, the people that this is their bread and butter, they train super hard and they're at a, they're at a level where they, um, they, can, they can make their living off of doing this. Um, and those are the people that I try and, and uh, ask the other groups to have respect for it because you can move from one to the next. If you decide that you really like it and start training really hard, there's no saying that, that you can't take it up to a professional level and decide that's what, that you're going to do. I've seen it happen over and over again. But if you sell yourself short while you're in the, um, the, the, the middle range, and then start doing jobs for that. When you finally are at this level and you try and go places and do things, they're like, oh, well that you set your rate already. So um, I try and have people be careful with that. And if you want to perform, um, don't uh, avoid trying to go into places where you've seen performances happening by professionals and being like, oh, hey, and undercutting because that is always, that's just gonna chat people's bark and you're gonna get a bad reputation about, about that. If you don't think that you're at a certain level and you're going into a professional venue where like this is serious and legit and other people are 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 really really they're hardcore um train one of two things one train harder until you get to the if you i've heard this so many times oh i just don't think that i'm worth that i don't think my skill level is at the point where i can compete with a certain other person and i'm like okay well it's one of two things if people are coming to you and offering you and asking for you to do that already they're coming to you so they have seen something in you don't sell yourself short and and try and do what the what the what the norm is and if you still don't feel like that train harder until you do believe that you're at a level if you're like i'm need to be able to do sw switches or a split balance or one hand like then train up to those things and it gives you something to aim for. But one of the other things that I've been really, really pleased with is people coming to me that are like, hey, this isn't my job. I really wanna perform. I really wanna do these things. Um, and I've said, get your community together and put, put on your own show. Get something together where like, create your own cabaret, create your own thing where you are bringing other people in, creating community and not sneaking things from other people. And you can even ask, your coaches or other people if they just want to come try out some new acts or make some art but that is community building and it's not taking away from anybody and then gathering those people together and sharing the information has made has been wins all around because then they start getting um experience and trust me we're rehearsing and even like working your routine out so you feel really good about it and you're like okay cool and then lights, camera, action, spotlight, and an audience, that's a huge leap to get into. So doing it in a safe space where you're there with a group of people that support you and love you and just to do it because you're still feeling it out and you're probably gonna miss some of your musical cues or it's not gonna be perfect. It's a great place <laughs> to do it because you feel so supportive. I did a job, um, I, did a, I did a show like that because I wanted to practice what I preach um that i didn't perform in and i just emceed at uh, hybrid movement Company's lab called uh, proper pandas uh school for uh or finishing proper pandas finishing school for wayward squirrels <laughs> and um i got i i called a bunch of or i i reached out to people and put it out hey i am creating the safe space for performers that want to get their first time performing in front of an audience and then i will I'll, I'll see your act, give you a little bit of um, like mentorship or advice if you want it. And um, let's see how it turns out. And, and in between each act, uh, I would give a little tidbit of business information. I should probably put this up online somewhere, but it was really great. And then <laughs> years later, I've had some of the performers come to me from that, be, be like, say, this was my first time performing in front of an audience and and 
it was, I, it was, a, I had a really good experience and I learned so much and there are people that I respect in the industry now, but I was like, oh my gosh, like that was, that was some of, one of the most wonderful compliments ever that it kind of, that created a trajectory, but that was something that created for ourselves that wasn't taking away from anybody else. And I think it was something that would be really helpful to people that are kind of starting to try and get their, their foot in the door. Please make sure to check out the circuspreneurblog.com for extended conversations and interactive content of each episode of the Live Like an Acrobat podcast. Check out my new pro series, Think Like an Acrobat, which is available exclusively on Circus Talk. It's pro tips for professionals within the circus arts industry. The latest episode of Think Like an Acrobat is Let's Coordinate for Ourselves, working in the expansive Asian performing arts industry with entertainment director Myla Katabayan. Tune in exclusively on Circus Talk. Hey, it's Shanae. Enjoying the podcast? Wondering how I make it? If you ever want to start a podcast or make and edit video content, Zencaster is the best tool for newbies and professionals. Easy to use, phenomenal audio and video quality beyond, and offers a free trial. Join the podcast community at Zencaster.com and don't forget to use my code, Shanae Stiletto, for 30% off your first three months of professional podcasting. The link is in the description. And now, back to the show. Yeah, and I love that. I love being helpful and, you know, getting people their foot in the door and also too in a certain way because I've always, you know, told people that if you're upset about different things that you see people doing in the industry, how much are you putting into it that's helping them to do it better and to do it a different way? That's why I've always been transparent. Um, I've always given things to people for free. I've always told them what they want to know um, because I always tell them, I want you to have just as much integrity in this business as I have had. Mm -hmm. It's not easy to maintain your integrity for the people that go around trying to make it seem like it's easy. No, it's not. It takes a lot of um, conscious decision making to not do the backwards thing um, in this business for as many years as me and Ben have been a part of it because (laughs) you see different practices and you see other people that want to undercut or want to do other things and you try and do the right thing because there is a right and a wrong. And I think it's very important to continue to dial that into um, this environment as well. And uh, I think we need to maintain um, those distinctions too, because when you think that, oh, you can just kind of get away with anything, well, then you're going to kind of, people are going to try to get away with anything in and around you. And you're not going to like it when it comes back around on you in that way either. So there is not a level, you know, sorry, go ahead. No, it's okay. (laughs) Um, I I tell people the, um, that for as much of the jobs that I'm proud of that I've gotten to do, there are just as many jobs that I'm proud that I did not do because it was it was not easy to walk away from them, but right. after and, mm-hmm. after everything after I looked after I saw how the whole project went down and what people went through, I was like, oh my gosh, I dodged a bullet on that one. Yeah, you never know kind of what your integrity is saving yourself from, you know, and reminding, you know, everyone out there, because of course, you're in, we're in a lot of different positions within this business. And sometimes you're holding two different positions at the same time. Sometimes you're three, you know, it just depends. You're not, it's not always just as an artist, you're not always just in casting, you're not always just the producer, you're not always just the agent or the middle person, sometimes you're everything. Um, And then you take on even more responsibility and that can get even more complicated. But even with negotiations, sometimes you'll be in spaces where people People don't want to negotiate with you. And that's a real thing. I've lost jobs where people, I said, this is my price. And they even refused to negotiate where we could have had a little bit of wiggle room in there a little bit, but they don't even want to negotiate with you. So there's a lot of different things that can happen when you are negotiating, when you are there, when you're trying to stand for, um, you know, for what you believe in and what you think that you're worth. I love what you also said too about if that person didn't feel ready and reminding them as well, that if you're not ready for that job and they're coming to you over and over again, that's when you get to give that job to another person yourself. You can contact them and give them that job. Say this person is way more qualified for me. And this is the rate that they're actually going to do it for because you were going to pay me. And those people will remember you. Exactly. And you are ready for stuff. You're going to be somebody that they think of. Exactly. And it doesn't have to be a tit for tat thing, no. but I know for sure that that, that when somebody has done that for me, I've been like, wow. Yeah. Because not a lot of people are like that. And that's one of my favorite, favorite, favorite things to do for somebody is 
like i'm like hey here's this job that's coming up if you can negotiate in a finder for me fee in there for me like great but mostly somebody was going to get this job i know you're a good person and you're qualified here you go i've had people come up to me years later that i was like oh my gosh i didn't even think you remembered who i was and have <laughs> set me up with some of the most incredible opportunities of my life like when i did the britney spears la chapelle david la chapelle thing that was because of somebody who i who had been one of my circus boys like a decade before and he was like oh like i'm i'm working with david and i recommended you for this and i'm like i haven't spoken to you in a decade thank you <laughs> that's so that was just like i i was flabbergasted by that and it, but that that made me more than anything and there's been I can't even count how many times now that being being a good person has never made me I've never been bummed out about that especially when it comes to me being like oh yeah if I was more like cutthroat and shady yeah I'm sure I would have a ton more money and I would also be watching my back left and right and I don't know I sleep really good at night so I wouldn't trade my I wouldn't trade my 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 sweet it, sleep for anything. It matters, and it also matters about how people carry you who you are around with them. Because believe yeah. me, the people, some people, I'm not saying all, but some people that you think are winning or da 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 da. da but then you get to hear how people speak about them if they have not mm -hmm. been acting out of integrity for a long time. People oh, yeah. tell you how they feel about that person, and yes, mm -hmm. there are people that after you work with them they maybe were able to manipulate you for you to learn that lesson but you don't go back so don't feel yeah. bad if you get it wrong don't feel bad if somebody got one over on you no one is out there running a perfect gig you know yeah. a, a just make sure that no one is no one is out don't there repeat mistakes exactly sure don't you, you make, well that's why i said make sure you make you were, new fabulous <laughs> that's why i said when you learn from them maybe you had to learn the lesson through that one but you don't go back and that's what's so important don't go back and if you do go back you go back with new buffers you go back with new things in place and new boundaries because let me just tell you there are certain people that don't uh, deserve for you to come back but don't think that they mm -hmm. won't come back because i've had people say i don't ever think that they'll want to work with me anyway, just based upon how that experience with and with the yeah. money and the negotiations and with the rates and they kind of got one over on me and I say, oh no, don't worry, they will be back and they do come back. So like what you're saying, come back with, you know, with, with better things in line and don't worry if you make those mistakes, but try not to make them over and over and over again, because exactly. that will also degrade your own confidence in how you sell yeah. yourself and how you're willing to work in this business. It really will. Um, don't think that it will. One won't. of the things and going into the vein of what you just said is there are some of those jobs that I've stepped away with because specifically because of, of rate where it was, I knew they had it, it was ridiculously low. And they right. came in to, and said, oh, well, so-and-so is willing to do it for right. like, 20% of what I, I I knew the job required. Right. And I was like, okay, well, the comparison it, became, it became another, it became another education moment that I said, <laughs> well, you, you, you get what you pay for. And I totally can respect that you are trying to, you're thinking of whatever your profits are, or, uh, whatever you're going through. I, I understand that you're trying to keep in the black or whatever, but just make sure that that person is insured. That's the first thing that I tell people and the it's been hilarious they're like what what do you mean insured <laughs> and then I'm like great well that just enjoy I can, if, if you if you hired me I could tell you all about that Mazel. the contract happens that's fine um but that's just where I kind of just start and right there usually is enough and the amount of times that I have had people come up to me uh the week before and be like, yeah, so it didn't really work out with this person for X, Y, Z. They didn't know how to rig. Um, they be ended up becoming really, really badly. It, it, they proved how badly organized they were. Um, they didn't look like what they looked like in their pictures or they had cleverly edited their reel, but when they came and did what their run throughs, they couldn't do their acts things like that i've had people come up to me and go um yeah so we would be interested in talking to you again um and then i lightly put in what i would never ever say to them but it's an asshole tax 
<laughs> that suddenly all my services have gone up 10% <laughs> because once again, your lack of um, preparation and does not constitute a crisis on my part. And that keeps me feeling sane, especially if then I do have to hustle insanely. I'm like, okay, I'm getting compensated for that. And I don't feel like my time is not being respected. Well, um, and I've had was, experiences where people have apologized afterwards, like what you're saying and said, you are wild. so incredibly professional. They're like, we have never, and we are actually sorry because we didn't even know what to expect after we've worked with you. And, you know, these are people that maybe been a little bit contentious with me at the beginning for yeah. some reason, or maybe around the I, rate. Because you know? also, you're like, but this out of nowhere why. sometimes. Yeah. And you're yeah. like, I have no idea why, why they're mm -hmm. feeling that way. And then after they're incredibly apologetic and I say, you know, there's a standard there really actually is. And until you yeah. see the standard that you've been missing, you don't know that it exists. Yeah. So reminding everyone out there too, make sure that when you have those rates and everything like Ben was, has been speaking about learning and developing your craft, it's not about just being able to do your tricks and your skills. Well, even though I just had a whole thing about, you know, how a lot of companies now, especially in Asia and in, and in the Middle East, you can't even get the job without doing a full on zoom anymore because people have been misrepresenting themselves mm -hmm. so much, but that comes a lot from Asia agents too, and misrepresenting who they're sending to those, um, those middle people. However, I know that that happens a lot as well, but it's like that standard of business. People shouldn't be that surprised that you have like your stuff together when we're doing these jobs and we're in this business either. And also what you were saying too, Ben, the comparison game, don't let other people compare you to what other people have been willing to do that you are not willing to do just because mm -hmm. the other person was willing to take that cut or they didn't want those certain extras. If those are the things Things that are your requirements it has nothing to do with what that other person mm -hmm. was willing to forego to be able to do that job for that person. And people outside of the industry will use that against you and people within the industry that'll use that for you. And also don't get taken advantage of in terms of the whole community speak when people are also <laughs> negotiating your price and negotiating your worth within your jobs, because that can also too be the most, the worst thing that can blindside you because you are now manipulated into trust. And then you'll agree to something that you otherwise not, would not have agreed to because you're feeling that quote unquote sense of community um, when yeah. you definitely deserve more and you're worth what you asked for originally um, because people will find budgets for everything except to pay you. Oh and my God, yes. I think that continues to be the narrative in and around our business, um, which again, like what Ben is talking about coming back and the things opening back up, people have been using excuses about not having any money to pay us since the beginning of circus time. It is not changing Some, because of COVID and yep. it's not going to change post COVID. They will give money to, you know, they will buy grass before they'll pay you more money and say that mm -hmm. they needed it for the event. Um <laughs> And, and you, yep. you wonder, where is the grass? Oh, why, there's nobody that's even using it. Why did you have to buy? You and know, that's the grass? thing is that they will always like uh, they one of the things that I've been so lucky to deal with specifically, there is a company called Shore Circus in New Jersey, who Melissa Marie has been one of the most absolutely wonderful people that I've ever worked for. For most situations, she's been like, I will never I'll never pay you less than a thousand dollars for certain corporate things. And she's always come through it for it. But also because of that, and because she's just, she's such a kind person to work for and like has that thing that we're talking about with integrity. There's been moments where she's like, I just need help with this. Can you come help me with this? And I'm like, absolutely. I am happy to do that because you always go to bat for me. And um, the things that I've learned from her just because she has such a great sense of humor, but she has weathered so many crazy clients and told me the stories after the fact that it's been really, really helpful for me because I haven't had to take that deep breath and swallow the bile and smile and try and continue with this insane client. But they, they, they don't negotiate with their um, catering. They don't neg negotiate with their lighting guys. Like they, yeah. they don't, they're going to pay for these people because those are those people's rates so i know that we're the fluff on the end of it and they have to worry about venue and sound and like all those things those are things that you just if you don't have a venue you don't have an event um but just know that they are they they're they're paying for things they're, they're handling things like that um when there's situations that i know it's a um 
uh, like some kind of special event and they and I can kind of feel a good vibe off of people but they don't have a huge amount um there was a situation where uh I was like look this is my rate and you tell me that you can't go past this do you have a way that you can sweeten the pot and they had been given away these in, these insane gift bags and they're like we're gonna give you 500 bucks and give you two brand new iPhones and I was like Perfect. That I can that I can live with. That is <laughs> that's fine. Great because they got to they had, those iPhones were part of a like was basically given them for free and they and they had them and they it was part of their it was in their budget to like just give these crazy things away. And I was like, well, I'm not a celebrity, but I will take your iPhone and I will feel good about this. <laughs> One last little I know we're getting to the end of our time, but um I wanted to give everybody a life uh, uh a proper panda's life hack for business when it comes to the concept of people doing ambient. Yes, oh I was just goodness. about to ask you about that to close out the show. <laughs> oh my gosh. I was like, before we go, we are going to speak about ambient working, which I think is the work of the devil. I have <laughs> always thought since the beginning of my career, which has now been very long, that I've never like, liked ambient it. Ambient hand balancing is <laughs> it's, I mean, it's, who, who, who does 30 minutes of ambient hand balance? Who does 15 minutes of ambient hand balancing? I mean, it's it's like, it's, it's, it's it's criminal. Maybe I don't have the any wall. <laughs> <laughs> no, even then I wouldn't. Um, so that was one of the things that I like to bring up to people because um, people will try and negotiate you down saying, oh, you don't have to do your act. You can just do atmosphere. <laughs> atmosphere and ambient are the same thing. And also one of the things that they try and bring you down on is say, oh, well, you don't have to do your hard tricks. Okay, you didn't hire me to come in here and suck. Also, right. I live in I live in mortal fear every single time I touch an apparatus and am in anywhere in a performance um, venue. I live in mortal fear that there is a circus artist there that knows what they're doing, and that I'm going to go up and half-ass it, and they're going to go, "Oh, well, uh, we thought he was." good <laughs> and, 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 and even even the company that will come out and even say that afterwards after they told you that they don't expect much all of a sudden afterwards they're oh all gosh. experts as soon as oh you do your gosh. first ambient set everybody's a hand balancing aerial oh, ex juggler expert, expert all I of a sudden as had, well which i found I've fascinating some, <laughs> i had, right um i have had some type a um <laughs> uh party party they were they were party planners but they were it was actually like betsy in accounting or in finance who got put on the party committee and then tried to this is before i really knew how to say no and came out and stood underneath me with a timer mm -hmm. and if i ended before mm -hmm. my 10 minutes she was like you still have like a minute and 15 seconds left or you still have 37 seconds left and i was like there was applause there was a drop there was like i did two songs like or three songs or whatever and that's when i was like okay we need to change up how people approach this um because the the point is is that ambient is exhausting yes and when you're yes. doing your act it's it, it also comes into a thing of safety when you're doing your act you know how you're pacing yourself you are you've done your act over and over and over again and you know where where your breaths are going to happen you know where your accents are going to happen you know where you're going to take your rest and judge because it's going to go with the music and it's entertaining the first thing that i try and do when i uh educate people clients about ambient is i ask them hey have you ever tried to climb a rope or like stand on your hands or stand on your head in yoga something that they can kind of go with they're like uh either no i'm like okay then you have no idea what this is or yes and i said okay great now try and do it for four and a half minutes but make it look easy and make it look pretty and make it look engaging um and then they kind of start to be like oh mm. yeah okay that's hard the other thing that i explained to them is if you put us in the air with just some like some jazzy elevator music in the background people will look at us for two minutes and then they don't look at us anymore and we are floating furniture, but we're not just floating furniture. We're floating, panting, sweating, like just praying for the time to end furniture. So we're not gonna give you our best when we're just sitting up there. Um, and we don't get paid by the hour that lots of business people, they think of like, I'm getting money 
I'm paying out by the hour. Like they, they, they need to equate a, a measure of time so that they can absorb it into their heads. And how I re, like reframe it for them is say, we are getting paid to elevate your party and to create this experience that people can then talk about and something that kind of changes the environment into something magical and people go more, wow and then yeah more is and not then they better can, then they can, no in, in that situation can, yeah and then um you, like if i'm doing two acts usually it's that first one and there's like oh my gosh did you see the aerials no i didn't okay and then people coming up to me when are you gonna perform again are you gonna, oh my second set is here and then people really really enjoy that and they're engaged for the entire thing people know when to applaud and then there's an ebb and flow and like a beginning, a middle and an end and people can go on mingling. Because that's the other thing is people don't know what the social um, aspects Contract. of like, oh yeah, they're like, do I clap? Like, do I like, what Like, what do I do? And then when it just drones on and on and on, they're like, oh. Um, it's just gonna be there. there. Are, yeah, um, but that being said, there are also people that I've had that are like, honey, that oil money is real. And sometimes they want floating furniture. And I've told them, I absolutely, you want somebody in the air? Great. I'm going to build this custom tempur swing, a red velvet swing. <laughs> and I'm going to sit my happy butt on here. And I will sit here and you will get port bras for 10 minutes while I'm on a tempur swing. And you are going to pay me double of what this would have been. Because even just sitting somewhere looking like, being on sitting it takes a lot out of you oh yeah um, it's not just sitting and that's the problem people think yeah, that it's, you're just you're in performing. a pose no that's not just a pose that's an actual trick and a skill and yeah. you know and then of course there's people you know you can get away with doing a lot less but it's not even it's not even yeah. that it's that it's so difficult it's so demanding it's so hard you should always be asking for more with ambient it is such a i think stain on this industry nowadays and it has been for a long time i really i I think it should be outlawed so also, or at the, least the, there should only be a certain amount of sets that people are actually able to ask for and that they should not, they should be mandated that they can't ask for more because it gets well, into this very the, strange this, territory, which I've seen could, countless times yes. for like, you know, 20 years now of how ambient has changed and how it's evolved and the messiness of it. But most often yes. risk involved and just how insanely difficult it is for how much less people want to pay you to do it so i have found a solution on how to educate people about this <laughs> in a funny way that is not confrontational and not just going like what the f are you thinking no crazy you can't you can't well, you can't say that even though you can't, well you can't say that to people. Well, even if you're not I mean, confrontational because i'm never <laughs> confrontational and it's always always a gamble and always a, 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 a very tight rope with ambient but i would love to hear but how we way, can make this an oh, easier yes. environment for ambient negotiations please so the way that i negotiate have negotiated this is i first <laughs> of all you use the s word you use safety for anything once you say that something is not, it's not safe to be doing aerial fabric for 20 minutes at like 40 feet or whatever. If they're zhuzhing around on the ground and like twirling in the fabric, great. You're getting a dance number, cool. But um, like use safety, that makes them liable. And then even regardless of whatever is there, if you, that then they get scared because you have to talk to their pocketbook. That's the only way that you actually are gonna get it into their heads. And I tell them, okay, great. You want, you really want aerial fabric. You really want hoop for 10 minutes. I can do that for you. So here's how much, or even if they want to do like a 20 minute set, like one 20 minute set, great. Here's how much that's going to cost you. So normally for something like this, for an event like yours, having me come in to walk in and do my act um, is two grand. Um, and then it, my act is three and a half minutes long. So if you want to times that if you want to divide 20 minutes into that um I, my math isn't great right now but i'm like i will be happy to tie a knot in a fabric and do porta bras for and condition my butt to be close together for fifteen thousand dollars i absolutely will sit in this fabric for you <laughs> and then like yes. I watch the light bulb go off in people's heads and i'm like so let but i never just say 
leave it at that. I say, let me give you something that's going to give you more impact for, for, for your event and be much more feasible for your pocketbook. And then I give them a couple of different options. And, and I have found that that is the way to have them steer away from that. I've had some really, really lovely, lovely party promoters that I, that I trust, that I love come to me and be like, okay, it's this amazing job in the Hamptons or whatever, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, and they want ambient. And, I'm, and I, I have explained it to them in this funny way. And they're like, okay, we're not doing that, but great. Also, there's ways to do ambient that you can add on and charge a little bit more for you will still get your rate for your act but then if you when i do walk around in some crazy costume that they supply like <laughs> yes that's not that's not optimal and that's not something that we want to do but you can but do it, it yeah, but yeah but it's something yeah. you can you can do yeah and i've done a combo like, of that when we, yeah when we go around but also that that's also fun if people kind of know who you are and what you're doing um that's also a nice way if, if you are the kind of person that is uh, sociable and can uh, deal with speaking with um, like often drunk muggles while you're in some crazy getup. And, and the like, costume is pretty distinct because I've also recognized <laughs> that when you do walk arounds like that, the costume has to be very like yeah, very yeah. on it for it to be engaged enough for yeah. them to not expect you to be doing something special in the costume i've also right. seen that that can work against you if the costume is not creative enough because yeah. then they if think the you're going to start doing circus be, in that weird, weird yeah, costume the costume so, yeah. has to be the, the, the like the, yeah the, the big the, like the, yes. the amazing costume <laughs> has to be the show um yes. also can i just give people one recommendation to remember is if people are doing a mardi gras party or a halloween party um tell them that doing walk around is a bad idea because everybody's in costume <laughs> oh say it again for the people in the background <laughs> say it say it again a, if you're doing a fancy dress party um don't hire just walk around characters because everybody's in a costume so they're going to get lost and and i've had people be like well why aren't you engaging more and i'm like because now i'm just a crazy person coming up and talking to people for no reason so, right. They think that um, you're just somebody that got a little bit too drunk at the party um, that's hijacked the party and that maybe yeah. they need to call security on. They don't realize right. you're an actual entertainer performer. Very, very good yes. advice. But I think that's really we great. I think, do you have one more thing to say? We're going to like wrap it up now. Um, if you want to say, I wanted to wrap it up with a couple of like, I think like non-negotiables for uh, negotiating rate. I'll just throw a couple out there. The first one okay. is don't ever go out to a job that you don't have your price up front, that you don't know how payment's going to be distributed to you up front, that it is uh, perfectly and properly defined before you uh, sign that contract, before you agree to those terms. Yes, people will try and get you out to a contract without telling you how much they're going to pay you. I am going within all denominators because there are so many different types of ways that people do things. You should know exactly when you're going to get paid. And it's also negotiable when you can get paid for the job that you're doing. Not always, but don't forget, you can get paid day of show, you can get a deposit for your event, you can set that percentage, it comes back to you. And then if they're negotiations, people will negotiate with you on those terms, but don't ever think that that's out of your hands or leave it up to others to decide when that's gonna happen for you. And Ben, what else Amen. do you wanna add on top of that as we close out? Thank um, you so much. I, I great minds think alike because it's exactly the last thing that I wanted to address was contracts are something that is uh it's a whole other um kind of, like the the doing a handstand with your butt on your head or doing a triple flip from the ceiling those are the easy things the business is the part that's challenging and one way to kind of streamline things and make things a little less complicated for yourself is contracts always have contracts anytime possible especially if you are dealing with one of it with with a friend um when you're dealing with a friend who's in a position that they're not normally in as a producer or whatever it's great to have contracts and i've had people be like oh we don't need a contract because we're friends and i said no 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 we are getting a contract because we are friends and so that if anything does come up we have it here in black and white and we're not going to lose our friendship over it because it's not a oh somebody saw something thought of something a different way um than than the other and um and that'll just keep things if somebody's really your friend 
that shouldn't bother that shouldn't bother them at all like and no. I know that it's more paperwork or a pain in the butt and sometimes things do slip through and like there's an intention and oh my gosh everything just happens all at once then anybody that's like oh no we're not doing a contract um then I mean and get it in writing should, anyway <laughs> yeah like don't um, do it through phone conversations even, but or even just have <laughs> some kind of a paper trail even if it's just an email Text message saying, email try, yeah, yeah. Try, something that says in writing the yes. paper trail of like time place pay what's expected of you see you then love you bye-bye exactly um, the other those things thing hold up in with, court by yeah. the way they do um, and, but not phone conversations just, unless they're yeah, recorded and, with both people's consent just saying and you, you've been already like that's even more complicated so it's easier just to get it in writing and um there is some people that are uh i have been in situations where i uh tried to get somebody to do a contract and we were like already so far down the pike that it was starting to make me nervous and I got the feeling, oh no, um, they are, they're not, they're going to drag this out. And I've already put too much into this. And that's been a learning experience for me. Um, a very wise woman told me if they're being dragging their heels about any kind of thing like that, tell them, okay, that's cool. We can worry about the contract later, but here's my writer to sign off on it so that you know that, so that you, so that I know that you received it. You can tell them you want green M&Ms and you need water in a stretching space. And then at the end of that, put in what's expected of you and what your price is. And I've had people <laughs> sign my writer and send it back and they never read it. Their assistant read it and was like, okay, cool. They, here's their water and here's, and it says when they're, when we're getting paid in there. Um, and then they're like, oh, and they're like, no, no, no. I have a piece of paper. It says that you, you saw this you signed it saying that you saw this and it's not the official contract, but it does say, Hey, I need to get paid my rate at this time, this agreed time. And that has been something that's saved my butt like three times. Mm, thank you so much. That is so useful. Everything, this entire mini segment of an episode was so, so, so useful. And I just remind people, I have Think Like an Acrobat, which is my pro series on Circus Talk that goes through all things business around this industry. I take things apart bit by bit with different guests. Um, and we break, down, we break down all sorts of things, side hustles, contract negotiations. Um, it's an ongoing series right now. I have uh, the entertainment industry in Asia out where I break that down, how it is to work there contract wise, artistically, everything, how it is to coordinate, working with coordinators there. Um, and I think that again, Ben, this is such an important episode. Um, I don't think we can talk about this enough. Yes, there needs to be transparency. I will follow this up with again. I think there needs to be a circus minimum wage um, that needs to be set across the board. And I look forward to us getting more and more and more of those rights uh, in the future as an industry, because it can't just continue to be this environment where things are just all over the place. We need to have basic standards that we can fall back on that are legislated um, and that are within the system. And then we can negotiate on top of those things. I'm not saying that we take away the negotiation aspect, which people start to say whenever I say things like that, they think that I'm asking for static things. No, I'm not. I'm no, we need a there base. Should be a basis to go off of that legally people cannot go under so that we are protected in this business. So I look forward to that. Thank you so much again, Ben. This was so incredibly useful. Thank you for your insight. And if you guys have questions and things that you want answered, contact Ben directly, or you can contact me, uh, Shanae, on the Live Like an Acrobat podcast uh, Insta. You can contact Ben through his Insta. Uh, he's, mm -hmm. again, very open. Uh, he is very, very, very experienced, very knowledgeable. And I think that we are going in the right direction in in this industry as people want more and more and more transparency. So let's keep up these conversations. Let's keep helping each other out and doing right by one another. And that's how we change things. And let's push for things that are going to be solid and that are in writing so that we have the rights like all these other industries have um, that they don't have to worry. And then when things aren't going good for them anymore, they get together and they renegotiate those terms like what they're doing right now in Hollywood because 
it's mm-hmm. not just about of having the lowest common denominator and exposure to do this very, very difficult job. Our job as circus artists or any position that you're having, but mainly as the circus performers is very, very, very difficult. It's not just for the art of it. It is your life. It is your body. It is your mind. And it is your money. And we deserve to be compensated appropriately, especially in this evolving market. Don't forget, as things evolve in this market for everything that supports circus or co-op circus, you need to be able to evolve your rates and how you manage this business or it'll manage you back. So take care of yourselves out there. I look forward to the next time I have you on, Ben. Thank you so, so, so much for giving me your time. And again, Ben Mendoza is going to be a reoccurring guest. So watch out for future episodes with Ben as he dips in and out and offers us all of his sage advice. It was absolutely my pleasure. Thank you so much. And everybody be safe. Have fun as much as you can with this crazy life and take care of each other because that is how we're all going to get through this in one piece. Thank you so much, Shanae. You are amazing and I love you. This podcast was powered by Zencaster. The Live Like an Acrobat podcast is also available on Circus Talk, the inclusive, independent, and international online network for the circus industry. Circus Talk's mission is to create a level playing field for this industry and democratize access to information. Please consider subscribing to the Live Like an Acrobat podcast and to the circuspreneurblog.com where you will find extended conversations and interactive content of each episode of the Live Like an Acrobat podcast. I'm your host, Shanae Stiletto, and until next time, please stay safe and stay healthy.